Um, so JavaScript is a language that probably everybody here has heard about. Um, probably every single person uses every single day in some form or another. Um, and it's a bit of a disaster. So we're going to do JavaScript and then tomorrow we're going to jump into TypeScript, which is sort of one of the solutions of how do we make this language less terrible. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go right into it. We're going to be coding live today. So I'm assuming everybody here has installed Node, which we did on the first day. Does anybody not have Node on their system? Awesome, great. If you try to code and it's not working, flag down Leo or Reed, they'll help, it, uh, help you get it set up. Otherwise, we have an online IDE that you can use for today. But yeah, we're just gonna get after it. Um, does everybody in this room have experience with one programming language like Python, Java, C++? Has anybody never programmed in a language like that before? Awesome, makes it easy. Um, so we're just gonna go. Um, so, so far we've built a static web page. The web page looks the same every single time. Um, which is great if you're doing something like showing off your resume or showing off um, projects you've created or whatever. But what if you want to start changing information? Uh, what if you want to display different information to different users based on different conditions? Um, that's called a dynamic web page. Um, you can't really do that with just HTML. The HTML tag is going to be the same every single time. You need some way to either access it, uh, to change it, to move it. You need some way to fetch data from a database and display that. That's where JavaScript comes in. Um, JavaScript is used to power the entire web um, for the most part. There are different languages like CoffeeScript or TypeScript or Dart. They all just compile into JavaScript. So really, you've got to start with the basics. Um, so it's a 1990s language. Uh, they sort of made it not knowing it would become this big, and there's a lot of problems baked into the language, which we'll go over. Um, it was intended as a client-side language. So what that means is it just runs in your browser. Um, we're going to show you some browser tips and tricks, because if you're doing any full-stack dev or front-end dev work, you'll need to get very familiar with your browser and how to use it to debug your application. Um, but as people began to write this for every single website that exists, for the most part, um, they realized, hey, we should be setting up backends with JavaScript as well. Um, so they came out with something called Node.js. Node.js just allows you to run JavaScript on a server as opposed to in your browser. Um, so we'll actually be using Node today just to run it in VS Code. Just your simple hello world statements are going to need a Node if we're not running them in browser. So language similarities, uh, it's going to look sort of familiar if you've programmed in C++ or Java or any C-style languages before. Um, it's going to look a little bit not. There's a lot of differences that are pretty spe uh, specific to JavaScript. Um, one thing that JavaScript does really well that you probably haven't encountered in your academic classes um, is the concept of asynchronous programming, which is basically wait for some event or something to happen then do something else. Um, this is one of the core features of what JavaScript does. And while other languages also do it, it's pretty straightforward in JavaScript. There's just a couple different ways you can do it. We'll get into it later. Um, but yeah, the, the metaphor that I've always heard is that, oh, Java, that's like JavaScript, right? Completely different. Just not the same thing. So um, vanilla JavaScript, basically you run a script in your HTML, um, or alternatively, you just uh, reference a script in your HTML uh, and it changes something. So when you're actually looking at the HTML on a page, this is referred to as the DOM or the document object model. Uh, we're going to talk about React a little bit later and why the DOM for React is different than the DOM for uh, traditional HTML JavaScript websites. Um, but essentially what the JavaScript does is it goes in and it changes something about the DOM and then the page is rendered differently. So um, we have an example coming up. Not quite yet. Um, but essentially, we, I don't want to spend any time on this. If you're looking at old legacy JavaScript, which is terrible, um, you'll see a lot of things like get element by ID, create element. It looks at every single element on the page using these functions, and then you do things to it. It's, uh, the syntax is typically document.getElementById, and then you use the CSS selectors, which Reed showed us. Um, to actually select elements and then do things to them. Um, again, this is just for reference. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, so let's write our first JavaScript here. 
If you guys can open your web browser, doesn't matter what. Uh, right click and click inspect. Um, this is in Chrome. It's going to be, again, the same pretty much everywhere. And go to console. Uh, Firefox, again, has something called console. It'll just look a little bit differently. Um, this is going to be the first line of JavaScript you're going to write, just right in the browser. Console.log. Hello world. Take three. Great. That's JavaScript. Um, it's that simple. It runs in our browser. Um, instead of print statements or see out statements or system that out done print line, it's a pretty simple console.log. Uh, get familiar with it, you'll use it to debug. But yeah, this is just our first instance of running JavaScript. So if we hop back onto here, there's some other things that before we jump into learning more about JavaScript, I just want to show you about the browser real quick. Um, there are a couple of important tabs here. Elements is going to show elements on the page. So if we'll see, if you want to mouse over something, you'll see the actual element that's being selected in that HTML tree. Sometimes these get a little bit crazy, but you can see if oh, that's not it. Div. And you'll see a lot of DOM. Uh, the word DOM comes up a lot, but yeah. So you can mouse over things and sort of see a little bit about them. If you go to network, uh, you can see requests. So I'm only showing you this because it's a website that I made so I can know exactly what's going on. If we go to inspect, we go to network. We can see if you try to log in. Great, a whole bunch of requests just happened. So if you're trying to figure out what requests are made at a JavaScript level, this is where you find them. If you want to look at something else like your cookies or tokens or anything like that, you go over to application. You can see what's in your local storage, which is just what you've saved locally to this browser. It can hold stuff. You can see your cookies, uh, any cookies that you issued, anything like that. Um, you got to be familiar with your browser. It's really important. This is just a two second overview. So. What if we want to run JavaScript outside of a browser? Um, because we don't want to actually be typing into our console log in our browser to run stuff. Well, let's get our VS Code set up. Um, Node.js, I think we all have at this point. Um, we'll talk about this a lot more in depth later in the course. But Node.js is running a server that executes JavaScript for us on the back end. Um, and that's how we'll be running it today when we start jumping into this simple examples. Um, I'm just going to get after it. So I'm going to make a new folder here. Cool. So I've got a new, brand new initialized repository here. I'm just going to add a JavaScript file. We're going to call it uh, test.js. Great. Um, so JavaScript gets a JS on the end. Pretty simple to remember. Let me kill my autocomplete. Oh, it's already off. So the uh, first thing we're going to do, just a console log, hello world. Um, I'm going to give you guys a second to get this set up just because I want us to be, all be doing this together. The rest of this class is just going to be writing JavaScript. Um, if you guys are having trouble for whatever reason uh, getting test.js up or whatever, that's great. The real um, problem is going to come when we try to run it probably. So console.log, hello world. So. We make sure that we navigate in our terminal to where this file is. You can press ls just to check. Uh, we got test.js. So I'm going to type node 
which is a command to run this, test.js, hello world. Um, has anybody been unable to do that? Great. I am assuming that we are all on the same page. Um, I'm going to be using this play button up here just because it's easier. I don't have to constantly type. It's just from an extension called Code Runner. What it does, it just types in node and then the file for me. It's the same thing. It's just running node. So uh, we're going to write our first function. JavaScript, like every other language that you would probably encounter, has functions and variables. Let's uh, add a, write a function that adds 1 and 2, and we'll see sort of the issues with it immediately right off the bat uh, about JavaScript. So the syntax that you have is function, name of the function, a, b are going to be uh, what we're passing in here. You get brackets. It's not like Python. You do need brackets. Turn a plus b. Simple enough. Um, so we're going to console.log 1 plus 2. Um, so this should output 3, assuming I didn't mess something terribly up. Uh, I think everybody in this room has installed Prettier at this point. Something that's really cool about Prettier, and you're not really going to see it shine here because it's pretty simple syntax, but JavaScript can get pretty complicated pretty fast in terms of how it appears on the screen. If I save, it's going to format on save. You see it just added the little semicolon there. Um, or if I do something like this, it'll fix it. Just like it fixes the HTML, which can look insane, it's also going to fix our JavaScript and TypeScript. So I'm going to run this. Three. Great. Exactly what we wanted. Um, you'll notice that there is no return type. You'll notice that A and B do not have types. Um, JavaScript is not a statically typed language. It figures out what stuff is at runtime, and then it deals with it. This is the opposite of C++. It's the opposite of Java. Um, I personally don't like it, in case I haven't made my feelings super clear about JavaScript. Um, but let's see, let's see some errors that we can run into. If I do this, do you guys have any idea, any guesses on what's going to happen? I'm adding 1, the number 1, to the string 2. Get an idea count? Oh, what's up, Gordon? It's going to treat it like a um, Watch this. We get one, two. This is not a number. Um, this is in almost every single instance of how you would use a function like this. This is an error. Um, the compiler, or, or not the compiler, but the uh, VS Code doesn't know and doesn't care. Um, all of this stuff is found out at runtime. Uh, likewise, uh, if we want to do hello to, we're going to get a concatenated string. Um, if we do an object, which I know I haven't talked about these yet, we will in a second. Uh, object, or I'll just call it field, uh, test. So we're now adding a string to an object. Hello, object, object. So you'll see this come up a lot in JavaScript, object, object. Uh, it's when you try to, for example, print out an object. Uh, it doesn't know anything about this object. Um, it being our console or it being our compiler or, uh, sorry, our runtime environment. It just treats it as an object, object. TypeScript will deal with this when we get to there, but right now this is not the intended function. You don't want to see something like this. Likewise, you can add functions to strings. This is, I can't imagine any instance in which you'd actually want to do this. JavaScript will let you do it. Um, same thing. So we're going to get rid of this uh, and just move on. I hope I made my point on, on sort of some of the, I guess, the problems that you might run into. Trying to debug some of this stuff can get pretty hard pretty fast. So let's see what's next. Great. Um, we're talking about the equality operator. So equals is a little bit different um, in JavaScript than probably most languages you've run into before. Function equality check uh, n. So same thing, no return type, no types of any type. Equality check, return true. So I'll just write this out, um, return uh, n 
mod 2 equal to 0. This is not an equality check. I'm sorry. This is an is even. There are three equals there. JavaScript, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be using three equals. Two equals is something completely different. Do I need to make this bigger, guys? Yeah. It's always always three. Um, so this should return true um, if n mod 2 is equal to 0. So that's just simply is n even. So console.log. Twenty should be even. We're gonna run it. True. Let's make it twenty-one. Same thing. False. Uh, simple enough, right? If we do this, I'm not even gonna ask what you guys are gonna guess this is. This is so weird. It's called type coercion, and I'll show you what it is. So now let's check for equality. This is just the two equal signs. You won't be doing this. And this is why you got to avoid it. I've run into bugs doing this before, and it took me a while to figure them out. So it has said that the string 2 is equal to the number 2. Again. In almost every case, you don't want this. This is a problem. What it's doing is it's coercing the types. It's called type coercion. It tries to make them the same type so that it, it thinks that you are trying to compare them and it gets them as close as possible. Um, this works with true and false. Um, one being true, zero being false. So we're comparing the string one to true. I messed up. Coercion equality is not defined. There's almost certainly a typo here somewhere. I don't want to get hung up on it. Um, the idea is that it's to be avoided. So likewise, equality, you give it three equal signs. Inequality, um, you don't do this. Two equal signs. So we would do console.log. Check inequality. I'm going to give it an A and a B. So this will be true if A doesn't equal B. I know it's all, normally not how you'd write a function like this, um, but just so that you guys get to see it. So this should be true. Great. Um, yeah, you're going to run into doing this at least once. You're going to spend at least 20 minutes trying to debug it. It's a pain. Um, what do we got next? Arrays. Um, so arrays, luckily, are, are going to be pretty similar to what you guys have seen before. Um, let's just do a function real quick to find the max of an array. Um, so that's simple. Um, R is just going to be our, in our, our array. It gets a little bit weird because you're looking at this function, um, and you can figure out it's an array from the name R. Um, but once you're working with a lot of different types of data that aren't just a simple array, a simple number, but like complex objects, it can be a little bit dicey. So int max, I'm sorry, not int max, max equals... There are two ways to do variables um, that are not constants in JavaScript, let and var. They're a little bit different. I'm going to recommend right now to use let. Um, we're going to talk about this later for like two minutes. Um, but for now, let max equal array of 0. Um, we're just going to do a simple for loop. Um, not in i, just i equals 0. i is less than. So 
So simple function from here. Uh, note the dot length. Um, each language is a little bit different in what they call stuff. JavaScript is just dot length. So if r of i is greater than max, max equals r i. Simple enough. Uh, and then we return max. Cool. Um, so let's uh, check this real quick. So to declare an array, you just name the variable. I'm going to call this one a const because we're not going to change it. Const my array equals 1, 2, 5, 99, and 44. Great. Console.log. I call this function find max. Of my r. So thinking this should do 99. Great. Did not embarrass myself. Um, that's just array syntax in JavaScript. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, string interpolation. This is really, really important for dis uh, displaying data. A lot of times you want, for example, on your uh, any web page, you might want to say, hello, username, thank you for logging in, or something like that. Um, there's a lot of instances where you fetch some data and need to display it as strings to a user. Um, JavaScript, luckily, uh, is pretty cool about this. So string, right, we don't type string, so uh, function. Uh, print name, name. I'll explain this in two seconds. There we go. OK, so here's what's going on here. Simple function, we've done these before. This is called string interpolation. Um, when we have a string here and we don't want to do, for example, we could have done this. Would have been the same thing, minus a space. Um, it gets a little bit cumbersome when you're trying to deal with a bunch of different uh, pieces of data in one line. So here's exactly what's going on with this. The dollar sign just references this is going to be string interpolation ahead. So it's dollar sign brackets. Um, and what you guys saw me make a mistake at first, which I always do this, I did regular quotes. This will not work. It treats it as a normal string, so it says dollar sign name. We have to use the back tick, which is located right next to one on the keyboard. Uh, nothing else will work. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of this in React. So, Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Can I get a pulse check real quick? Great. I'm assuming it's OK. Uh, I think I might be going a little bit too slow. Not a number. Um, this is a pretty important function. It's just is not a number. It'll tell you if something's not a number. Um, I'm not even going to write a function. Is not a number will return true if whatever's inside of it is not a number. I'm trying to get through the boring stuff so I can get to the more interesting stuff. So, classes. JavaScript has classes. They will look pretty similar to classes you've seen before. Um, animal. Constructor. This is the syntax. You just type constructor, name. Uh, when we make a function within a class, we don't type function. We just type You just call it constructor. It's, always it's just constructor. constructor. It's the wild, wild west out there in JavaScript world. It's, it's a weird language. Um, so console.log. Um, I don't even need to write this out. You guys will get it. Um, but we can use the this keyword. So we can do this.name.
great. Um, so if you do something like this, Rex is going to speak. He's going to say hi. Nope, I messed up. I didn't pass them in. Thank you. If you guys see me doing something dumb, please let me know. I have done something dumb. I don't want to spend too much time on this. There's a dumb typo here. Reed, do you see it? I don't either. Moving on. <laughs> I, I knew I was going to embarrass myself. I got it out of the way now. We're good. Um, cool. So now we're going to start talking about a little bit of more modern additions to JavaScript and some of the things that you haven't seen before. Um, this is just the basic how to express stuff in, in the language. We've done that. Let's get to the interesting stuff. Arrow functions. There is a different style of writing functions in JavaScript that isn't just function name like so. Um, it's going to look weird. I hated it at first, um, but they're really, really interesting. Um, so const, we use that for, for when we want to make things final. Um, so const, let's call it add. So this is going to look a little weird. Const is going to be, this always goes before the function. It's not referring to what we're returning. It's basically a preliminary for the function. I don't know why they chose that keyword. It probably has to do with low-level memory. I don't care that much. Um, now we have the function name, add. The function name always equals something. Um, in this case, it's, um, it's going to equal a, b. So those are the parameters that we're passing in a and b. If we weren't passing in anything, it would look like this. Um, and then it wouldn't know what a and b are. We then have this arrow, which is an equal sign, greater than sign. Um, and then we have the brackets of our function. Syntactically, it's going to look weird at first. It will make things easier. Um, in terms of what it actually does, it's going to be the same in 99.9% .9 of the cases. We're not going to have time to talk about the one case in which it's different. Um, but the case in which it's different uh, revolves around the keyword this. JavaScript handles the, weird this, or the word this very strangely. Um, and it can change depending on the context in which you actually reference an object. Uh, arrow functions keep it consistent. So it's arrow functions from here on out. Get used to them. I'm never writing the word function again in this class. Um, something cool about arrow functions, you can uh, do them like this. That, this is identical to what I had on the screen before. Same thing. So that we don't have to put a return statement. It's all contained in one line. Again, weird when you first see it. I promise it's going to get easier. Um, I did want to talk about the ternary operator. Um, have any of you guys had professors that talked about the ternary operator in C++? Um, I use it all the time in JavaScript. I think it makes it really easy when you're writing React. Um, again, it's sort of weird. So um, let's say num equals 2. If so, num okay, so there's a lot going on on this line. The triple equal sign, we know about that. Um, what this sign is, is is an if else, it's just in one line, it's, it's compact, it's small, it's easy to read. When you have to put this stuff actually next to HTML, it will make your code much more readable when we're doing React. Um, so this is saying if num equals 2, I usually see the question mark and go um, num equals 2 question mark. If so, do the first thing. Otherwise, do the second thing. Um, it's kind of weird. Professors will yell at you. At least some of them will if you use the ternary operator. Um, but we're going to be using it here. Okay. So now we're going to talk about 
objects in JavaScript. Um, objects in JavaScript are great. It's my favorite part of the language. They're really easy to work with. They're really intuitive. Let's take a look. So right off the bat, um, we have brackets. All JavaScript objects are wrapped in brackets. Um, I think we were talking about some of your like settings.json when we were trying to set you guys up with Prettier or some other extensions. Um, that's just in JavaScript object notation. Here's how it looks. We have a field name, name George. Last name, Washington. This is George Washington. So we have some data fields here, um, or, or data members, or whatever your language calls them. Um, it's just variable, and then it's value. Variable, then it's value. And it's really important that we have the semicolon, and it's really important that we have the commas. I always forget commas. Um, if you forget a comma when you have this long object, that, long object that's got like 30 things in it, um, everything's going to turn red. Not just one line, it's going to be like 60 lines of red, and it's going to be scary. It's usually just that you forgot a comma, at least for me. Um, but you can do a lot more with objects. We can do arrays and objects. Uh, let's say you had hidden, uh, friends. James Madison. and Steve. So we can have arrays in objects. Um, we can also have objects in objects. Uh, favorite gun. Type. Musket. Style. Uh, length. I've done a lot of strings. 20. His favorite gun is an object. So now we have an object nested within this object. Um, my obj uh, has all these fields, and it has an object as a field. What if we wanted to do um, maker? Maker can be an object. Uh, Smith and Wesson. I shouldn't be talking about guns. I don't know how I got on this. Um, but you, basically, you guys see where I'm going with this. We can arbitrarily nest. Objects, we can arbitrarily nest arrays as deeply as we want. Um, this is really, really convenient. It's easy to read. It's easy to write. You can also do functions. There's no syntax errors there. Um, this is a function that's part of this object. Um, so this will just console.log. Hi, guys. So let's say that I want to. Uh, look at some of these fields. I'm going to make this a variable now. Um, so I say we're going to do let. So let's do let my obj. Great. So console.log. This is how you access fields in this object. My obj dot name. So should be George. Great. Let's say he's got a nickname. So we can change him like that. Typically, I don't want to make a catch-all statement. Once we get to React, a lot of times we're going to keep objects as constants. A lot is going to be constants. For now, we just have it as a variable to show you. Um, yeah, I know that this was like a two-second thing on something really, really important about objects. Does anybody have any questions about them? Cool, because we're moving on with objects. So um, there's something called object spreading um, that works with both arrays and objects in JavaScript. It's pretty important stuff. Again, it'll come up in React. Um, but let's say that we want to make a new object. And let's say that we want to keep it the same, but add one thing to it. Um, and let's say that for data security purposes, or, or we don't want to mess with things, um, we're going to keep this as a constant. So let's make a new object. Uh, 
Um, let me think. Uh, I have messed up. Sorry, one sec. Thank you. Reed, you caught this, didn't you? There we go. Um, so what we're doing here is basically we're spreading out is what it's referred to as this dot, dot, dot operator. Um, we're spreading out my object. So it's going to be exactly the same, and then we're adding a height property to it. So if we print my object two dot height, we should get 22 here. And we're going to make this const. Cool. Um, a lot of times what you do is you don't actually change an object. You make a new object and you just spread the old object out into the new object. You can do the exact same thing with arrays. Exactly the same. Um, if we want to do This works exactly like how you think it would. Um, my R2 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, what else did I want to cover? We did spread. We have to get to asynchronous. And we're going to do um, destructuring real quick. Um, if we want to work with an element in one of these objects, and just that one element, uh, normally you could just type my obj.name if we want to edit the name. What if it's like seven levels nested deeply? What if it's my .name .mother .city whatever? It becomes a nightmare. So what we can do is saying const. Uh, so sorry, I had an example here that I wanted to do because it made sense. Doesn't matter. So. Const first name equals my name. This is called destructuring. Um, we wrap it in the brackets like this, and now we can work with first name directly. Um, again, it doesn't seem like a lot. It's really important. You'll do it all the time, um, especially when we're passing props around in React. They can get kind of kind of uh, hard to work with if you don't do this. Um, there's nothing that, to my knowledge, you never need to do this. It just makes it easier. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know I know I'm moving. Yeah, what's up? For this spread thing, um, can you change a field that's already there? So spread takes the entire thing and just puts it in the new object. So if you want to change a field, if I did the spread thing, then like friend equals friend, uh, would that just reset friend or add another thing to Name is deprecated. I'm so sorry, what was the question? Oh, yeah, my first question was you wouldn't be able to, it would reset the name of my object to be hi instead of George, right? It'd be logical. Yeah, what we're doing, I believe so. Um, so sorry, give me two seconds. I think you just edit it with the dot is. I've never done this before. Thank you. That's a log. Appreciate it. So I'm doing dumb stuff every day. Um, you guys are going to get used to it. But yeah, it resets it. I was trying to show it to you really quick, and I put a typo in. And then I put another one, and then I put a third one. So yeah, it just overwrites it. Um, did you have a part two? Would that, could you do that with an element of the array? Um, 
like how would you how would you access the index? I wouldn't do that. Um, I'm trying to think if you even can, um, because the array just puts in all the elements in order. It's not like you can access a particular element by going um, r7 equals. Okay, so I wanted to get to, this is the big one that I wanted to talk about today. Um, it's gonna be asynchronous calls and asynchronous programming. So a lot of times what we have to do in JavaScript is wait for something to happen. It's event-driven programming is what it's called. Um, so that could be simple like user clicks a button, say hello world. Um, it could also be something like, I don't know, um, you make a request to an API and you have to wait until you actually get information to display it. Uh, if you, for example, and I'll show you this, make a request to an API and try to just immediately move to the next line in your program of saying display this information, it's not there yet. Your program got to display the information before it actually got the response back from the API. Things take time to happen over networks. Um, and even if they're very fast, it's not faster than your computer. So that's what await comes in. Basically it says, wait for this guy to finish whatever it's doing, and then we'll move on. Um, it'll become more clear once we're actually querying APIs and whatnot. Um, for now I just have a couple of simple examples, hopefully. So, So you have to declare the function as async, um, meaning it's asynchronous. Right off the bat, you just put the async before the brackets. Um, so what we were gonna do here, uh, I think we were gonna print out a message and give it some delay. So. Actually, I'm not even going to fetch. Uh, do I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just going to go for it. So, Trying to do this from memory. I don't remember the exact syntax of this function. It's on my sheet somewhere. Let's give it a shot. So ideally what this should be doing, I know the syntax is a little weird, this set timeout function, um, basically it's saying we're gonna hang out for a little while and then we're gonna do the body of this function. So you'll see that it has two parameters here. Um, the first parameter is going to be a function itself. So these brackets, that's a function. It's not taking any parameters. It's an arrow function. Um, and then we're going to just console.log the message. We're going to wait for a delay amount of seconds to do so. Um, I think it's milliseconds off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, I think we went over this, but what exactly is the equal sign arrow? Green. Got it. That is, so I have two of them here. Um, that is simply how we declare functions. Um, if I mouse over it, it's going to say function. Okay. So basically, a normal function would look like this. Um, function async. And you put the async here. Oh. Um, these brackets on the right, because we use the word function, it just looks like this. Um, for the top one, we're doing an arrow function. So const a weighted function, that's the name of the function, um, equals, so these are the parameters we're passing in. We're saying it's asynchronous, and the arrow itself um, doesn't really mean anything. It's just sort of saying, 
And now here's the, the body of the function. Okay. And then you need the semicolon at the end? Um, the semicolon at the end of? The second Yes. Uh, Prettier will automatically put that in for you. I probably have never typed it once in my life. So if we call the function, Reed or Leo, what did I do? Oh, not that. That's not even syntactically correct. Oh. It was right the first time. This is more stressful than it looks, guys. <laughs> there we go. OK. I think I just forgot to save, or something similar. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is cover promises. So there's basically three types of ways that you can handle asynchronous events, or asynchronous functions, or anything in JavaScript. Callback functions async await and promises. Um, async await is just what we just did. Um, essentially what you do is if we were, for example, querying an API um, function, um, this is just going to, we're not actually querying an API here. Um, If you have a variable there, we await data. If you want it to be a constant, like so. You simply await the results of the function and then get out of it. Promises are a little bit different. Um, promises are basically saying when you get out of a function, it will be returning a promise of something <coughs> happening. Um, and this is going to be a lot easier to visualize once we hit TypeScript, um, because TypeScript has handy types, and you can actually see what the promise is returning. Uh, when you return a promise object, you are returning a promise of something. So for example, uh, if we wanted to return a number, um, you could have it return a promise. And the promise would be, essentially, there's a network request being made. Something's going to happen with this request. It'll either give us a number, or it'll give us null, or nothing, or something like that. But something's happening, and we can deal with that once it happens. So one example of a promise that we have here, so like you might do this for like reading a file, or like asynchronous queries, or something like that. So Promises can either be resolved or rejected. Um, sorry, one sec. I missed a colon. <laughs> this is so much easier when I have GitHub. Uh, I'm going to cheat. Sorry, guys. Just in the interest of time. There we go. I was missing a closing bracket. So here's what a promise is. Um, we're getting a new promise, and promises can be resolved or rejected. When a promise is resolved, that's what happens when you get the promise back. It contains what it's supposed to contain, and you can use that value. When it's rejected, something went wrong. 
Maybe it didn't return at all. Maybe it returned the wrong type of data. You can deal with this yourself. Um, so what we can do here, we're going to just do another set timeout. Okay, we're going to wait a thousand, one second. So here's what's going on with this, with the syntax of this actual function. We're making a new promise. Now that's that's an object type. That's a special object. Is a promise. Um, this is not a function call itself. Um, it's an object. So the object is taking this parameter, which is resolve and reject, is what we're doing on resolution or rejection. Um, those are special functions, so these are each functions. Um, and then those parameters of those two functions uh, are then passed into the method body, which is covered in the pink arrow here. We're then going into an asynchronous event, set timeout, which is just saying wait one second and then do something. So we're waiting one second, we're saying success is true. If success is true, we're resolving the promise. Um, which means we're taking the data from it and we're able to use it. Otherwise, we're rejecting it. I know this is really complicated. It's going to be easier when we start looking at TypeScript and we can actually see, oh, this is a promise of an integer. This is a promise of a Boolean and actually see how to deal with it. Um, I don't have a real world way to do this that I can show you without setting up like databases and stuff. Um, does anybody have any questions? I, I know it's a weird concept. Does anybody actually understand this? Okay, cool. I got some sort of. Um, what's up? Can you show how you use that promise? Like, what is, what is resolve and reject? Oh, good question. Um, so, once we resolve um, the promise, sorry, I got lost in my brackets. Trying to figure out where my brackets are, so sorry. One second. How would you say it? Because I'm trying to figure out how to say it. I just say you can use it then. You don't you have to declare what you resolve and reject are? Like I believe, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna clear I'm gonna clarify this when we talk about TypeScript because I've never actually dealt with native promises in, in JavaScript. Um, typically what you can do is you can also await promises. Um, the resolve and reject themselves. Thank you. Um, so there's dot then as well. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so if you're getting a promise from something, if resolve success, else reject, um, there's a function called dot then. I was just going to do it there, yeah? No? go. So I, I moved it to cool. Sorry, that was a little bit rough. Um, but yeah, basically we have my promise gets the promise. Once we actually 
do what we're doing with it. Dot then, the dot then syntax means do something, wait for it to complete, then do the next thing. Um, so this is a little bit hard to read. Um, Prettier makes it hopefully a little bit easier. So we have my promise dot then is going to be what we do next. So we're passing in the result, um, which is any parameter. Um, and then what we're doing is console.logging the result. Um, in this case, the result is success um, because we set success to be true over here. So on resolution, we're given success. Um, if this was a failure, just thinking about it. There we go. We catch the error and log it. Um, so, so far we have async await, which is what I typically like to use. I'm not a big fan of promises. I think they're overly complicated, um, clearly because I botched it. And we also have callback functions, which we can see with set timeout, which is just, we have this function. Set timeout is a function, and we pass a function into that function. And then when something happens, which is in this case, wait a thousand seconds, the other function triggers. It's about all we have time for. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know that there was just a lot of JavaScript thrown at you really fast. Cool. Um, so just a heads up, we're trying to get all the sites, um, all the submissions for sites put together. So if you haven't submitted it yet, um, please do so soon. They're looking really good so far. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. Thanks, guys.